Hi, this is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and welcome to episode 16. <laughs> Today is July 21st, 2024, and I am in full out Christmas and July mode, so I had to really think about the fact that I wasn't saying a oh, welcome to that. I know not everybody is into Christmas in July and the daily vlog, so I wanted to make sure I came on and posted an episode this month. And I did save one or two things just for the episode that have not talked about on um, the daily vlogs. But come on over to the daily vlogs too. Pick out a few, see what you like. I am actually going through my stash. And I still have a couple more videos to do of that because I haven't gotten to my cotton yarns. Or my hand dyed yarns yet. Uh, I've also, I mean, we've got everything from mammoth, mammoths to pickles to rock bands. I've got a little bit of everything over there, so there should be something there you like. Okay, so I need to get this off. It's getting a little warm wearing it, but what I am wearing was a birthday present from my brother Bill. It is a feather and fan scarf. And this, the yarn is Hank Me Home Tonight. Of course, I can't remember which one it was, so I'll put the name down below here. But Bill got it um, during Yarn Crawl. Yeah, he got it during yarn crawl this year. I kept asking him, because it has Delina in it. I can't tell if you can see that or not. But it, ha it has Delina in it. And I kept asking him, are you sure you want to get that? You know it does have Stelina in it, right? <laughs> so this was a very much a wonderful surprise. And I will put the information down below. Okay. Huh. It is such a beautiful day out. We had some rain this morning, so I'm not complaining about the weather. So let's see, what have I got going next? So let's, uh, ah, I talked about the birthday and on one of my Christmas in July um, daily vlogs for my birthday, I am doing a drawing. So I am going to put a video in here of me actually drawing this morning. Okay, I am recording picking a winner for the birthday pattern um, giveaway or pattern book. Helen Seymour, you are the winner. Okay, congratulations to the winner please make sure that you contact me via Ravelry, email, or Instagram. Um, Ravelry and Instagram are both Belinda's Bobbles. Email is belindasbobbles at gmail.com. I'll put it right here. And let me know what you would like as far as I, it was going to be for either an Amazon book of some kind crafting that I can send to you if you are in an area that gets Amazon or if you wanted to pick up to, I think I said about $20, uh, $20 US dollars worth of patterns um, over on Ravelry. Just contact me, let me know, and we will work it from there. So thank you very much for those that participated and for all the birthday wishes. Okay, I'm looking at my notes here. So let's just dive in. I don't want this to be a really long one, but and of course it will be um, anyways. And the guys are coming over shortly, so I've only got a limited amount of time before the uh, front door opens and they start piling in. I wanted to go ahead and record down here because we're doing a little bit of work in the craft room and I've been setting up down here in the evenings anyways. So let's start with finished objects. I do have a couple of finished objects this month. Uh, the first one is the Vanilla DK socks. 
I'm not going to pull them out right here. I'm going to put a picture right here of them because I've been wearing them. I wore them for three days um, this week to kind of test them out. So this was a vanilla sock pattern and I made them look at my little notes over here I've got everything pulled up let's see with beachy breeze um, fibers boardwalk DK and proto star they did take um, three quarters of a skein so 75 grams to make this pair of socks and I'm sure you would have noticed there's two different patterns going on here the, uh, it's a vanilla and a two by two rib so what I was doing was trying to figure out if it made that much of a difference between vanilla socks and socks that had some sort of a pattern um, for me because I wear these as work socks and I wanted to see if the swelling in my feet or anything if, if it affected it and I wear them in little boots I'm sorry if you're hearing noise from outside I didn't want to get the um, microphone out or anything because I haven't really been using it and I'm liking my sound just on my phone so the experiment went on for three days with me wearing these. You know, they're wool socks. I aired them out at night. <laughs> but now they're definitely ready for a wash. Uh, and there wasn't that much of a difference. So I'm fine with either uh, just plain vanilla socks. They didn't slide down or anything. Or the rib socks. So for me doing a bunch of design and everything, it just doesn't make a lot of sense because I wear them in bootlets. No one's gonna see it but me. I'm more interested in the cuff as far as for anyone else to see. So that is my first finished object. My second finished object is also something that I do not have here with me. And it's something I cast on and finished uh, let's see what my dates are here. I've got it over here in Ravelry. Okay, so I started this June 29th. So last after the last episode. And I finished it on July 5th. So this was a one-week baby blanket for me. And that was with... Well, some of it was my... No, I hadn't started my vacation time. So I was working during this time. And this is the Princess of Diamonds blanket. I'll put a picture up here. It's already gone to the um, parents of the baby that it's go uh, going to be wrapping up this winter. And this um, pattern is by Sharon Goodwin. Now she has a free version with ads or you can purchase. I loved this pattern so much that I went ahead and purchased my own copy because this is now going to be my go-to um, crochet baby blanket, I think. I love how it starts with the diamond in the middle, and then you're adding on all the different areas so you can really play with your yarn. I used Premier Yarns Parfait Layers. Now, I'd gotten this yarn a few years ago on clearance, so I can't even remember what I paid for it. Uh, and I it has 200 grams per... Cake. There we go. Per cake. Hold on. I've got one over here. Okay. So parfait layer. And I think I got this at Hobby Lobby for $3.97 it says. It's a number five bulky. And I said you get, I take it back. It has 240 grams. Okay. 459 yards. And I used, this one's a little messy because I pulled from it. Um, to finish up, I used 276 grams, 1.15 skeins, so 528 yards to make this baby blanket. Again, with a bulky weight, the parents loved it, and I, it was fun to make because it had all the different levels to it, but at the same time, it wasn't hard to remember or anything, and it made up fast. So I'm definitely making more of these. I actually have two more full ones of these, plus this one. So some of the nieces and nephews may be getting similar blankets. <laughs>
Okay, and the colorway on that was Playtime. I don't know if they still make it or not. What else should I say? Ah, I used a um, K hook, which was, I don't think that was what it called for. It was 6.5 millimeter, and it just worked great with that yarn. And the size ended up being... 29 inches by 30 inches, so a nice size baby blanket, and it's, you know, square for a change, with it basically being a granny square style. Part of my finished objects is actually the fact that I have been working on doing some mending. This month, I got a mushroom to do some mending with, it ha it, I love this, it has a magnet at the top, came with needles and everything. I got this off of Amazon. And it just all stays in there. And I've had socks for two years pretty much that have holes in them that I haven't been able to wear. So I tried, I went on to Muddy Boots Maker. She has some shorts just showing really quickly how she does her patches. And so I tried doing one on the inside because this one did, um, it was work, it was thinning out, but it wasn't fully a hole. But I don't know if it was because it was my first one, but see it bunches. And I don't like the way that that looks, even though, you know, no one's going to see it. So I tried again, and I did this one where you could actually see the patch. Yeah, it's a little fluffy on the inside, but I actually like that better. This was the first pair of socks I ever made myself, and as you can see, they are well-worn and everything, and I, I love them, but I haven't worn them for, in over a year. So I have that back in rotation. Then these, my old shoes, had torn holes in the back of both of them. So I'm getting better as I go along. I still had some yarn that very much um, was very close to this. So I just patched both of them on the outside. Because these were actual holes. I mean, these were holes. <laughs> both of them. So those socks are back in rotation. And then this was some socks I um, was a pattern by Bakery Bears, um, Kay Jones. I can't remember the name of it right now, but my shoes only tore a hole in one heel. I've replaced those shoes, by the way. And again, it was a hole. I need to trim my extras there. But I actually had some of the yarn that I had doubled for up here. And so I was able to make, just holding it single, I made a patch. So it covers it enough, even though these are, these are DK socks. The patch didn't have to be DK. So now I have three pairs of socks back in the rotation, and I am excited for that. Okay, so that's it for finished objects. On to new construction. Yes, I did cast something new on this month, even with all the craziness of doing vlogs. And I have it in my Christmas bag that my stepmom made for me. I've been a little rough on it. I need to do a little repair with some boots and Christmas lights. I love these triangle bags and some Christmas lights on the inside. Okay, so what did I cast on? I cast on another secret summer crop by Jessie Made Designs. This is her free um, crop pattern, which, of course, I make it long and this is my fourth one. I've done one in wool, two in linen cotton, and I wear these like crazy. Now all the others I did with DK, so what I'm doing this time 
I am using Katia's Aqua. And this yarn is, let me find the information here. It's a little tiny print. Bear with me. Okay, so it's 50% cotton, 50% polyester, and the polyester actually comes from upcycled marine plastic. It's made in Spain, and it is very soft. These are 50, uh, all the color is 58, which is a red and white. Again, with my red theme, I'm still in a red theme, as you can see. And it's on here somewhere. It's gonna be on here, uh huh. 50 grams, 109 yards. So they consider this to be a DK. I don't. <laughs> I think it's closer. I think it's closer to a four ply. I mean, look at that. Up against my nails. Oh. So I think it's closer to a four ply and it's knitting up closer to a four ply. I am doing a size large. I started out doing the medium large like I did last time and I was knitting on this on our vacation when we went down to Waco for a couple of days with the grandkids. Shauna was driving so I was getting a little bit of knitting time in the car. I was working on the rib down here and I cast it on. I would pretty much been, gotten to the end of the rib just about. And I noticed one side of the rib was bigger than the other. At some point in time, I picked it up in the car and did not pay attention to which side the yarn was on. You know, because it does have to be on the right-hand needle. And I basically made some German short rows. <laughs> so I had to pull it out completely and start all over again. And I love how soft this is. Now, you know, as you can see, it's a bit see-through-y. I don't think it'll be that bad once I've got some skin behind it. You can see the definition of the stitches a little better there. I think it'll be okay, but that was one of the things I wanted to experiment was with using this pattern with a thinner yarn because I've always held the yarns double so far and or done a DK merino. So this is a bit of an experiment at the same, I love how soft it is, sorry. And so I'm just moving along on it. I am this close to being um, with the 50 gram. I was working on it last night at a rock concert. Just it's super easy to be able, you know, just like socks to do this pattern, just around and around and around. So I have four 50 gram skeins. You're supposed to be able to do this with 100 grams. I don't think for the length that I want, it, that's going to happen. But because I've got about three inches there is all. So we'll see how much I end up using for my size and my length. And I'm going to do the 20 stitch um, bands to be able to cover the bra straps again and because I really like uh, the wider straps. Okay. So what else do I need to tell you on this pattern? I'll have to look at the needles to tell you which needles I'm using because I haven't updated Ravelry on this yet. I am using US 8 5 millimeter, and this is the Knitter's Pride XL or it says XL on there. Okay. 
So that is all I know to tell you. I mean, some people make socks all the time. I seem to make secret summer crops all the time. Just me. <laughs> but it is such a great pattern, and it's a free pattern, and I don't know. Okay, so that was... I think that's the only thing I cast on this month. What do I have over here? Ah... So, I have something in here that I was hadn't planned on talking to you about, but I'm going to. So, next up is in the works. I'm just using my clear bag here still to take to work. And I have continued to work on the Flutterbutt shirt, also by Jesse May Designs. Now, this is a paid-for pattern. And I just liked, I figured the flutter butt was because of the fact that it had a ruffle around your butt. No, but apparently it's supposed to remind you of a butterfly. <laughs> I just like to say flutter butt. <laughs> so, show you where I am. I'm all tied up here. If I can show you where I am. Sorry about that. My nose was itching. I got the fluffy stuff out, and so I took advantage and got me something to drink at the same time. Okay, so since I was needing to add on a new skein to start going up the front, I just kept my old one attached for the back, which is why I'm having trouble right now. So, what I am using on this is Broco Dolce, and these are 200, 200 grams, no, they can't be 200 grams. Okay, they're 50 gram skeins. There we go. Uh, this is the color low. Low light, low light, Lolita, I don't know. L O L I T E. You tell me what I'm supposed to be saying, uh, which is a purple. And I got it on clearance at On the Lamb Yarn Shop in Grapevine. So I have knit the body to 12 inches, put the back. No. I'm further along than I thought. Okay. <laughs> I think this is the front. So I've I've got the front. Yeah. I've got the front done. Other than when I com um, combine it together. I did the body 12 inches. And now I have started up the back which will match the front and then she's got a technique and then I've got to put start putting all the ruffles on ruffles for the sleeve and ruffles for the bottom so that's why I only did the body 12 inches Let's see I've already started this split up the back I did the body 12 inches because I'm going to be adding that ruffle and it's a pretty good size ruffle on the bottom now when I first started this I started in a size uh, let's see what size did I end up with I cast on size for extra large and it was just too much material so I decreased down to a, a what, uh, I decreased down actually to a size medium because I like the way that's and I mean even the size medium you know see it's gonna have plenty of ease on it I am using, again, US 8, 5 millimeter. And yes, I have turkeys. I just grabbed what I could grab. <laughs> and I am loving this. I actually am hoping to have it done in time to wear um, to...
Okay. The DFW Fiber Fest. So I'm going to be entering this into Mandy with Mouse's Make. She has a make-along right now for anything that you're wearing to a show. So I'm going to be entering this into that um, make-along. It, um, it's for a pattern prize, I think. But I'll put the link down to her information down below. Okay, so the body's going to be 12 inches and a 3-inch ruffle. I think that's all I have to tell you on it. I'm going to drop it all over the place now over here. And then I did not get my notes up on this. I had not planned on talking to you about it, and I grabbed it because I've actually been working on it this last week, so I need to tell you about it. This is the Totally Tessellated by Andrea Mallory Socks. And I am making these for Sam. He is always asked whenever um, he asks for what color he likes, he wants something that is um, orange with yellow polka dots. Well, you can't get fabric very easily orange with yellow polka dots, and you can't dye yarn orange with yellow polka dots because yellow has to be basically the base on that. So I was only about here. Yeah, about there. So I've doubled the leg length, and I've started on the heel. Now her pattern, it is a paid for pattern, but you can tell by the pictures the type of heel she has on there and I decided not to go with her heel. I am put using um, one of Kay, um, Kay Smith's from the Bakery Bears, her butterfly heel. It's my favorite. And if you notice, this is where the, it comes together. It just adds that line, so I put that to the back. And I'm going to do things a little bit different whenever I pick up uh, or finish the heel. I'm going to continue with the tessellated on the foot at the top. And I'm going to do stripes around the back. Because I'm kind of worried already. I've put, I got these over my foot to try them on. I haven't tried it on Sam yet. And it was tight. It was very tight and hard to get it over. You know, I've got my floats there. And I've tried to make it where it would stretch enough, but I'm concerned about it. So to give a little bit more leeway, I'm just going to do vanilla knitting, which will end up being stripes on the bottom, and continue with the totally tessellated on the top of the um, foot. So the yarns that I am using with this, the yellow is Cascade Heritage sock and highlighter yellow and then the orange you can see it better here it's actually orange with a little bit of yellow in it and that's cascade yarns heritage wave these are both sock weight yarns so let's see what they've got uh, 100 grams they both have 437 yards and so they're i like using heritage sock because it's just so soft and the colorway, sorry, on the orange is solar. And I have several more skeins of this, so you'll be seeing it again. And for this needle size, what am I using? I can just look. I'm just chasing it down on there. These are US 2, 2.75 millimeter. I had another line on it and it was yarn. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going with this. This is a very fun pattern. I do enjoy the pattern. Um, it's a slip stitch and I would recommend going over there. This is the first time I've uh, made an Andrea Mallory pattern. I haven't done any of her others. So that is all in that section. Next up, let me switch my screens here. I only have a little bit more time for the guys that arrive. Uh, I'm calling this section Techniques with Bill. 
All right, my brother Bill, um, I, you saw him if you saw any of the, the um, Christmas, or not Christmas and July, uh, the yarn crawl videos. He actually came on there with me, and I've been sharing some of his makes along the way in some of my previous videos. Uh, but he came over for 4th of July and was showing me what he was doing with his vest. And I was like, what is going on here? So I started asking questions. So, the yarns are getting to me today. I don't know if it's the fan or what. Okay, sorry. You're going to see me touching my face today. I apologize if it, that bothers anyone. Um, so I'm going to put some video, uh, a little video together here of pictures that he sent me. Okay, so this is Bill's unnecessary sticking on a vest. What he has done here is he has cast off his center stitches, picked up about six stitches, and continued on. The purpose of this is because when you're doing German short rows, you're actually building up the back. He's needing to build up the shoulders for his size. So this way he will build up the shoulders and it also helps if you have a back area to where um, as you're decreasing you're getting pulling. But he just does this all the time now because it fits him better. It gives him more of a rounded back um, to the neckline. And then once he gets it to the height he wants it, he steaks that little center section there. When he pulls it apart after he has cast off his stitches, he has this rounded back to the neckline. And then he steaks, the, does the front pretty much the same as far as just a regular front, um, but he steaks the front so that he can have a V-neck, which is his preferred neckline. So now he's steaked the back, he's steaked the front, and he's doing, I think, the sew, sewing method, but he sometimes does the crochet method, so I'm not sure which one he did with this. I'm not looking real close, sorry. So then he just picks up his stitches, does his ribbing around for the back and the front, and I'm going to show you the inside of the back and the front, and then the outside of the back and the front. So this is a technique that he uses all the time. If y'all would like more information on it, just let me know, and I will see if I can get him to explain it off camera for me so that I can give this to you um, in more detail. I still haven't tried it yet, so you may get a chance to just try it with me. All right, thank you so much, and I'm going to take you back to the past. Okay, welcome back from future me, because I would have just put in this video um, to finish out Bill, uh, my techniques with Bill. I'm curious to try this. I don't know if I need to try it out or not. The way I need to see how my vest and everything hit my back and see if it's something that I need for my size. So I hope that's helpful for some of you. So next up is confessions. Now I haven't been that bad, but you know, it is, I did have vacation week, so I did get a couple of things. Sorry, lighting is doing weird things. So I did pick up, and I don't count this as part of my stash because I've got um, a project specifically for this. I am going to be making some kids hats, and I'm just going to I'm going to try to just crank them out on. Um, get this all turned around here just in case I like the picture. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to crank them out on my knitting machine because I'm just wanting to make some bright, bright hats for our daughter Shauna to be able to share with some of her um, homeschool group whenever they go out on activities because I had made Buddy an orange hat for Christmas 
and apparently they've been having to share that around to keep keep track of wayward wandering kids. So that mom wanted to take it home with her. <laughs> so I figured I'd make Shauna some spares just in case. So that's what the project is here. These are just Anthem Cascade yarn and they are 100% acrylic, 100 grams, 186 yards. Uh, so a number four. I got those at On the Lamb Yarn Shop, and then Juju Knits was having her semi-annual, sorry for the crinkling, semi-annual sale. Again, sorry for the crinkling. She was having her semi-annual sale, and I saw this Barocco Isola, and I fell in love with that gold. So I got three skeins. And this is color 8932. It's a number three light, but not really, not really. Um, it's 38% cotton, 36% linen, and 26% viscose, made in Italy. And it reminds me of what I made my other two linen and cotton um, secret summer crops out of. So this is going to be another secret summer crop. <laughs> after I finish the current one that I'm making and my I am so sorry lighting is just doing weird things today on the camera so that's it for my confessions I uh, got a couple of other little things that I went over on um, Christmas in July and I'm just going to leave that there until I make something with them and then I'll bring them over here then what else? Uh, so the only thing else I have is my life happens section. And if you're not wanting to stay for that and hear um, a few little things that have been happening in the family, then I wanted to say thank you for st um, stopping by with me today. I hope you had a good time and I hope to see you again soon. Please do leave a comment, like, all that good stuff. It really helps get my um, channel out there. I have some new subscribers and I'm very thankful that they've come over on during Christmas in July and I hope they stick around. So this next section, life happens. Last episode, I told you we had lost our dog, Steve. And three weeks later, we lost Proby. Um, he was 15 years old and it was due to heart failure and we just we had to make that really tough decision so our family is down to one dog and it hasn't been like that in oh well 16 70 it hasn't been like that in about 18 19 years so the house is very quiet we're having a lot of difficulty. Sam's having a lot of difficulty adjusting to this. And then on top of everything, a week ago, we took Ziva in for an eye infection. And they diagnosed her with heart failure as well. So she is on a lot of medications, has to lose weight. So we're doing lots of light walks at night because she can't be out in the heat and she can't be walked too much or her heart stress too much. So these little ones are just coming after us. Uh, this last month, we also I also went on vacation, had vacation time spent. It was a staycation except for a couple of days. And um, Sean and the grandkids came. So if you wanna see any of that video, it's over on Christmas in July. Um, I'm just gonna kinda of leave that all here right now. Um, next month I am hoping, I've got the time off, so I'm hoping to be able to go to Oklahoma's first yarn crawl. I wasn't able to make it to Arkansas yarn crawl because we already had some plans and some things going on. And we just haven't really been leaving Ziva on her own for a real long time because just her being by herself is stressing her. So life is just moving on, moving forward and it's just crazy how everything is happening all together, all at once. And we love these little guys. We really do. And they 
they give us so much love. And Proby was my yarn cuddler. He would sit in my lap. I'll put a picture here of him just kind of sitting in my lap, cuddling up to my yarn and keeping me company. But I also don't think he, he just, he couldn't cope without Steve either. The two of them had been together for so long. All right, so after that, Debbie Downer, uh, I'll say goodbye. I hope you are having a great month, a great summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and a great winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And I will see you either over on Christmas in July or next month, whichever comes first with you guys. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you soon.